Well, welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. We have here with us one of our iconic guests. You know, when they say entertainment industry in Africa, this is one of the pioneers. This is one of the game changers um, that has been in existence for so long. He is um, an iconic DJ. He's a systems, you know, and a professional systems and IT engineer. He is a showbiz genius, of course, a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, of course, and um, a talent manager. Um, is a consultant when it comes to anything entertainment. Is a TV producer, of course. He's um, the producer of uh, Houston's Auburn TV. Um, he's also the co-founder of the Heat DJs. He founded AfriJams and DJ to download. He, you know, his parents are. He's from a diverse background. His parents are from um, Cross River and um, Delta. You know, we call him the Calabar boy. You know, uh, he grew up in Plateau State in Nigeria. He was born in Sierra in the southwest part of um, um, Lagos. You know, he's cool also in Lagos and in Kaduna and Agbo, Benin and Joss. And I'm talking about none other than our very own Epen Young Otu. Otu, like uh, someone with a Sabi play. I always get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pronounced Otu. Otu, yeah. So that's here with us is Mix Master Brown. And we're here to talk to him about the 30 years of being in the game welcome to the show thank you thank you very much welcome thank so you. tell me how did it all get started how i mean 30 years i was not even born then but you know more just like better <laughs> you know for real how 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 did it all get started well you know each time i tell people this they they don't believe it it, it really started like a joke i i didn't set out to be a dj um while I was in school, high school, uh, when my folks would go to work, I would, you know, s sneak back home, you know, should I use the word steal? I was still there. Yeah, it's okay. The stereo set, uh, the, I think back then they used to call it eight track cartridge. Yeah, the cartridge. Yeah, you know, steal the whole set, take it to school, party in school, you know, back and forth. Sometimes we'll sneak back home, we'll have a party at home, and sometimes my folks will actually come back home and catch us partying at home wow. while we should be in school. You know, so it all started like that, and my sister knew that there was no stopping me when it comes to music because they tried to stop me several times, you know, to pay attention to. I mean, I'm not saying I, I didn't go to school, I of did course, go to school. To be you an know. IT engineer. Yeah, you, you know, know but. They wanted me to focus more on my, uh, you know, academics rather than uh, music. But when they realized that there was no stopping me, they now jumped into it and actually encouraged me. They actually took me to the store. They bought me my first set of equipment because there was no stopping me. So I always tell folks this, you know, sometimes you might want to guide, you might want to tell your, your kids what direction they should go to, but if if it's not what they are cut out for, mm. you just need to encourage Allow them. Allow them to yeah, live just be themselves and do what maybe because there's nothing as fulfilling as doing what you love. Exactly, to do. exactly. Well, and I I learned also that your sister was your number one supporter, the one that actually stood by you that said, you know what, that's what you want to do. Let's just go ahead and get it done. Yes, yeah, she she was actually the number one person. To try to discourage me, she tried as much as possible to discourage me because um, in my earlier uh, stage in life, I lived with her. Uh. Yes, yeah, so she actually uh, raised me up to my uh, high school, you know, level when I left and I went to Abuja. So she she called me up one day and said she calls me a taker. I was like, okay, I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> she said get dressed we're going somewhere and I'm like um where are we going to say just get dressed in the blink of an eye i found myself in a labor market you know she was like okay which of these mixers do you like and that's how it started wow and then it didn't stop there i told her i told her that i needed to um you know sharpen my skills you know i needed to be a better dj she just laughed do you know what she did mm -mm. She just wrote a note and said, hey, take this note to uh, 
a DJ back in the day. He used to be called uh, DJ Mannix. Um, he started DJing from the 70s, I, I guess. I don't know, but she told me to take the notes to him. Don't I, they have a record label or something? Uh, Mannix? Mannix owns a, a record store, Tower Records. Right, okay, ha, huh. there you go. Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. So that's how it started, though. So I took the note to him, and he saw, he saw who, who sent the note to him. I was like, oh! Is she your sister? I was like, yes. I, oh, I, they used to know me back, you know, back in the day. And she wow. said, on the note, she said, this is my, my kid brother. You know, he's an up and coming DJ and he always wants to DJ. And I thought about you, maybe you could put him through. And when he read the note, he said, smoke piece of cake, you know, and that's how he and said, he, took you in. he just took me like his own um, kid brother too. And, you know, he showed me the ropes, you know, he, when he set up the, the record company, he put me in charge as the manager. And while I was in the store, you know, attending to other things, I always had the time to practice by myself. Mm. So while I was practicing, no disturbance, no distraction. I think that was how, you know, you got better in the I game. got better in the game, yeah. So I, I, I know you're, you're married um, with children, of course. How do you combine that and DJ work? Um, I think I married my best friend. Um, That's sweet. Yeah, I married my best friend. She actually understands uh, what the job entails. requires mm -hmm. and entails. So she really knows how to mix it up. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I got to this 30 years because of her. Um, there was a point in time in my life I was thinking about quitting. Mm. Um, and for some months, I was contemplating, I wasn't DJing, and out of nowhere, she said, oh, there's a DJ competition coming up. That was in 2001. Well, I think you should go into it. I was like, I haven't DJed in a long time. And, you know, I don't think I can do it. She, she pressured me. Oh, this is what you do. This is what you love. This is your passion. It doesn't matter if wow. you haven't DJed in a long time. You wow. better, you know, try and see what you can do. So, okay. I caved and I went into the competition. At the end of the day, we we started the um, from Calabar. I made it to the zonal finals in Port Harcourt, and we made it to the national finals in um, Lagos. And at the end of the day, I was the first run up. Wow! And so I think that sparked up another phase of my DJ life from there. So I owe that to her. Oh, lovely! That's the, that's the support structure right there. Yeah. And then um. I know, I know you, you know, after getting to know your background a little bit, you schooled in so many parts of Nigeria and then you were born to a diverse culture and all. How many languages do you speak? I would always tell people I speak five different languages, but I understand seven actually. Wow. Yes. Wow. And then um, having been in the industry so far, I, I saw a video last week. Um, from uh, P Square, one of Africa's biggest um, uh, duo, right? They were celebrating your achievements, 30 years being in the industry. And he actually said something that struck me. He said, Mix Master Brown, I know you didn't ask me to do this, so we will just have to do it. That is Mix Master Brown, the f uh, P Square's first ever DJ. Wow. Yo, what's up everybody? Shout out to Mix Master Brown. You guys know him as Mix Master Brown. I don't know. I still call him DJ Brown. He's this dude has been mixing for over 30 years. Bro, I'm here to support you. Much love. Go do your thing. 30 years, no be beans. DJ Brown, Mix Master Brown. I love you. You know I got you, man. Trust me. Trust me. You know, ask me to do this video. I just see Senator Own, I say I must do him because I know say you go one cut, that make I do him. Before you do that, I'm doing it for you. Much love, bro. Mix Master Brown, respect you. You're not just my DJ, yeah? you've been there for even P Square. P Square, first ever DJ. Bro, I respect you, man. Keep it locked down. 30 years, no be beans. Mr. P says so, I'm signing out now. Let go! In the crease. All right, this one, I want to say big congratulations to you, Mix Master Brown. 30 years, no be beans. 
30 years, and uh, they tell you through this guy, they shut him down for Houston. If you just be new person for H-Town, you need to check out this guy. You need to also go in page, Mix Master Brown, I am being page, DJ of life, DJ of the gods, DJ of human beings, DJ of anything, animal, or anything. This guy, the DJ for anything. So three days, group, uh, day one, now this Friday, today, today, eh? pretty lounge. Day two, you go day for past lounge. Day three, na BH Ranch. Na then good day. So what you need to do? Houston people make na come out. If me say I know the H town now. But of course, yes, I did tell all of them make na come out come groove with DJ Max the Brown. Go on your Instagram page, you go see all, 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 all the information when you need. And then you go feed the waiting for them go groove. Ah, this guy too much. Master Brown, yeah, head did you too much. Quiet in the studio. Yeah, 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 guys, keep quiet in the studio here. I want to give a special shout out to one great DJ. Man, 30 years in the business is not easy. DJ Mixmaster Brown, keep doing your thing, bro. We're giving you a special shout out from your brothers here in Nigeria. All right, keep representing. Wish you the best. Yeah. Well, I wasn't, um, I found out for going to school in Joss because, <coughs> excuse me. Just seems to be blessed with a lot of talent. Um, people like MI, MI, uh, Ice Prince. Ice Prince. A lot yeah. of people don't mm. know this. <coughs> but Two Face, excuse me. Idibia. Two Face Idibia actually schooled in Joss briefly. Um, Sal Sultan was born in Joss. Um, most of the popular Nollywood actors to pass through just because they have a film institute in Joss. In Joss okay. Most of them, you know, come to Joss. We need to bring that up big time. Exactly. You know, so while I was in Joss, um, P Square back in the day, they used to be known as smooth criminals. They were dancing and miming to Michael Jackson. Mm. Yes. While they were, you know, still lit, um, little. And I had a friend who was managing them. Her name was uh, Choma Ugoji. So I got to meet them through Choma. And Chema said, oh, these guys are good, you know, see what you can do, help them. So I started working with them, I started moving with them, I started DJing with yeah. them. Sometimes when they have um, events in Abuja or neighboring states, they will take me out, DJ for them, you know, promote them. Up until 2001, when they got into a band competition that uh, cut Sibens and Hedges back in the day, mm. it's called Golden Tones. Yeah, I remember Golden Tones. And f a funny thing happened, you know, they enrolled. But on the day of the audition, they got there late. So the guy in charge was like, oh, no, 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 that's that's not going to happen. They're late, they're late. No, no, let's cancel them, let's strike them off. So I went up to the guy and said, look, I know these guys. You know, these guys are good. Please, for my sake, can you just let them just just do whatever, let them do what they can do. And he was like, okay, let them just go and do it. Let them just go and do it. So right from that day, they got on stage. He saw them perform, he signed them up. Right there. Right there. He was like, this boy is a good I said, I told you, I told you so. <laughs> so that's just one of the things that I, I have done for Peace Square, and they would always be grateful for that. Because without that one minute that I spoke get, with that guy, that, that they, prob they probably wouldn't have, uh, you know. And we learned also that you've anchored and DJ for renowned artists here in the United States as well. Someone like uh, anchor DJ for 50 cents uh, a Jew unit um, for their concert back in the days. And um, Akon, um, yeah. the likes of Jaru, Kevin Little, all of those things. Yeah. That's um, quite actually, an achievement. Yeah, actually it was uh, back in Nigeria when they came to Nigeria. To Nigeria, okay. Yeah, when they came to Nigeria and each time the, the Nigerian breweries, um, I think Best in Hedges, because I DJ for those companies. Right, so they bring them in. They bring them in and, and, and sometimes they don't come with their DJs. They're like, okay, uh, who's your top DJ here? And they will always, you know, nominate or oh, they will wow. always call out my name. Like, So we now have to rehearse. You know, after rehearsal, we we'll go to the main show. It was quite an experience. That's quite an experience. So, like Acon, I think I did it for Acon twice, though. Wow, wow. So, um, rounding up um, with thirty years of experience in the industry, I have two things. Where do you see the industry going? Briefly, just talk to us about what, where you see the industry going, and what advice do you have for young and upcoming uh, DJs? And artists in the industry in the United States and in Africa of course um, about the entertainment industry I think it's a 50-50 thing because um, 
we have pardon the use of the word cabal we have a cabal that seems to want to run things in the, in the entertainment industry back in Nigeria uh, in such a way that they don't give the up-and-coming artists the chance that they deserve the recognition that yeah they need to grow everybody wants to uh, focus on the video whiskey banner boy but between you and I, we know that they are not the best arts in Nigeria. And the viewers, because they're hearing us. Oh, <laughs> and the viewers too. Everybody knows they're good, no doubt. Can't take that away from them. But I can tell you this, between Lagos, I mean the west, east, south, northern part of Nigeria, we have talented people. They need financial support. They need exposure, but nobody's giving it to them. You know, so at the end of the day, they get frustrated and then probably start doing something else. Take to the streets. Exactly. So um, the good thing about that is Nigeria is talented. We all just need to go dig in deeper, get these people, promote them, uh, finance them, support them. Uh, that would be my own uh, suggestion. Now, about entertainment here in the United States, it's hard. If an Afrobeat artist it's really really hard if your people can support you it's hard to get some other people to support mm. you you know um, I know most artists wouldn't like me saying this but I think in terms of uh, Afrobeat acts I have seen better acts out of Nigeria than out of the United States it's mm. just my fact my own mm. I wouldn't want to say fact um, to me it is. my opinion you know uh, because I know a lot of people are like oh no that's not a good thing to say I mean that's my opinion I've been to Nigeria, I've been to the, I mean, I live here and I go to Nigeria most of the time and I compare and I like, well, wow. You know, especially when I was DJing for the Crossroads State Carnival, it gave me the opportunity to meet all kinds of artists, up and coming, established artists, you know, so I have met a lot of them and I think they're a better act in Nigeria. Right. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're an Afrobeat artist and you're based here in the United States, I think you need to work hard, you know, to kind of like meet up with the standard of what um, they're producing back home. Thank you so much, Mix Master Brown. Thank you once more. Thank pleasure, you sir. for you know honoring that invite and thank you for staying true to the game for this long. And we hope and pray that you continue to soar uh, to soar higher than you have achieved so far. Thank you very much. All right. Well, you heard it all from the master himself. He's a veteran in the industry. If you need advice, counseling, or whatnot, you know, and you need a mentor, please don't shy away from reaching out to him. He's more than available and willing to assist any young and upcoming art artist, right? And um, well, we have a segment coming up soon, so uh, we're just going to round this up with a commercial. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Master Brown. My pleasure. All My right. pleasure. Thank you.